Welcome to the Whiteboard Doctor. If you are returning, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, welcome for the first time. Today we will be doing an episode of 5-Minute EKG on the confusing and intimidating left, that's an E, bundle branch block. I could have just abbreviated it but we wrote it out because we care. Left bundle branch block. Okay, so I have a 12 lead EKG from a patient I've seen previously um, with a left bundle branch block, which we're gonna use to demonstrate left bundle branch block findings on 12 lead EKG. I did just want to briefly though, go over uh, this beautiful drawing of a heart and the conduction system. As a quick reminder, just briefly about the conduction system in the heart uh, will help guide us in terms of understanding left bundle branch block. So conduction system, just quickly, we'll have a node here, SA node, we'll have a node here, AV node, then we'll have a single thing here, bundle of hiss, and then you have your right bundle branch that comes out this way into your Purkinje fibers, and then you'll have your left bundle branch coming out this way into your Purkinje fibers. And we can just label that just real quick. So this is SA, AV, bundle of Hiss. And then your left bundle branch, right, that's an R, bundle branch and then you have your Purkinje all over. Okay, so usually, and these are on both, both sides, Purkinje, I'll just abbreviate that one. So usually, right, your conduction goes, you get your SA node, and we come all through the atria, and we go down into your AV node, right? And then there's a little Slowing here, we go down the bundle of hiss, and then we go into the left and right bundle branches. In a left bundle branch block, you have a block in the left bundle. That means the depolarization you're going to get through the heart is actually going to preferentially go to the right, and then you're going to depolarize the left side through the septum here. Through the septum here. And that's how the left ventricle depolarizes. Because of that, you're going to have findings on 12 lead EKG that represent that. So the first thing, because you have a slowing of depolarization through the ventricles, you're going to get a widened QRS. Um, I am going to white out a little bit of our strips down here just to give us a chance to write down some of the definitions. Uh, we won't need this area anyway. Good, let me switch back over to pen. So, um, number one, we're going to get a widened QRS. If you have questions on intervals such as the QRS interval, uh, I'll link up to another 12 minute EKG video in the top right corner that you can uh, look at. Uh, in addition to the widened QRS, we're going to get a dominant S wave in V1. So dominant S in V1. And then you're going to get these broad monomorphic R waves in the lateral leads. So I'm just going to say broad R in lateral leads. And Lateral leads, we're talking about what? Think about it for a minute. If you have questions on where all the leads sit, I can link another video in the top right corner that will go over all the leads, limb leads and precordial leads. Uh, your lateral leads, though, are going to be 1, AVL, V5, V6. Okay, so we're going to leave those down there, and then we'll go to the EKG itself to talk about some of these things. So in terms of widened QRS, our QRS interview interval right, is from Q to R, and the normal is less than 120. If we count the little boxes, this one is widened. I know it's a little blurred. It's probably hard to count all the little boxes here, but this is greater than 120. So we have a widened QRS. Um, you can go to any of the QRS intervals on this EKG. All of them are widened. In addition to that, um, we talked about, so we'll check that, this dominant S wave 
in V1. So what that means, if we go to V1 here, right, and we have our, we'd have, I can't draw it right near Q, then R would be up, and then this is S. And you have this huge dominant S wave in V1. Uh, you can see that persistent through V2, V3 as well, but specifically we'll look at V1, and we get this dominant S wave. Dominant. So check that one. Um, and then, and this is kind of, uh, the dominant S wave in V1 is less thought about. Usually we think about this wide inch QRS and then number three, which are these broad R waves in the lateral leads. So if we go to our lateral leads, I'm actually going to switch colors here. Let's do it in red. So we go to our lateral leads and I'm going to circle them in red. That's one, AVL, V5, and V6. And we get these broad R monomorphic waves. I will just go in this EKG specifically in V5. We do not have this broad R wave, right? Because this is an S wave here. R would be going up. So I'm going to cross this out. But in the rest of the lateral leads, 1, AVL, and V6, we see these broad R waves. And what do we see? So in V6, we'll start. We have these broad monomorphic R waves. And if we zoomed in, which we wouldn't, we would see that the R wave had this little notch here. It looked like an M. And you can see that notch a little bit at the top. Um, we call this M notching. And this is typical in left bundle branch block. So we get this broad R wave, wide in QRS with this M notching. Now let's flip over to AVL. And again, this is our R. We have this big, broad R wave. And here, if you look closely, it looks like this. It comes up, goes down, it has a little thing that comes up again. And here we call this just notching. We don't call it M notching, but this is just notching. This is another type of notching pattern, such as M notching that we see in left bundle branch block. So again, we have our wide and QRS with this broad R wave in one of the lateral leads and this little notch, which is right here. If we go to one, we see a similar pattern to AVL. So I'm gonna circle it, here's our R wave, right? And again, you see P, this would be Q, then we come up into our R, it comes down, we get a little notch, and then it comes down the rest of the way, and then we get these T's here. And this again is this notch. So. In left bundle branch blocks, we have a wide inch QRS, right, greater than 120, which we see throughout all the leads. Oftentimes we have this dominant S wave in V1, and remember we have Q, R goes up, and then S would go down. So in V1, you tend to see just this, this huge dominant S wave, as we saw in R V1, which is in blue, and then in for number three, we have these broad R waves in the lateral leads that tend to be, I'm going to draw arrows here. So we have come up, we have M notching, or we can have just regular notching, which comes down and goes up just a little bit, or we can just have these big monophasic R waves, again, all widened. And these are all R waves and lateral leads. And that is how you diagnose left bundle branch block on 12 lead EKG. Um, I'm going to do a, another session on Scarbosa's criteria in left bundle branch block, so look for that. If you're interested in seeing that, uh, you can subscribe to the channel and get notifications because it should be posted probably in the next week or two. Uh, please subscribe. Please ask questions. Please comment. We'll do our best to um, respond to each and every one of them. Again, we're a relatively new channel, and we're always looking for more followers and more content that you guys want us to make. Um, so thanks for watching. Have a good, what day is it today? Thursday, and we'll see you next time.